Hi, I'm Marielle Hemingway, and I have my partner here, Melissa Yamaguchi. Uh, we are the co-founders of uh, the Marielle Hemingway Foundation, and we are super excited because this is our very first podcast for Out Comes the Sun. And the reason why we're calling it Out Comes the Sun, I wrote a book called Out Came the Sun, which is really looking at my past, looking at my story, and sort of how I've come to a place where uh, basically the sun is shining in my life. <laughs> and what we'd like to do is share with you all, you know, information in this podcast not today, but over many, many weeks of, of doing the podcast, sharing information about resources, sharing information about the latest and greatest in mental health, wherever it is, whatever it is, from holistic to food to exercise to, we'll talk about the seven doctors, which I'll explain at another time. We'll talk about all of the things that we know, uh, you know, are coming down the pike for helping people with mental health problems. And let's just face it, everybody has uh, some form of mental health problem or situation or something to have to deal with. Everyone deals with something. I mean, for instance, we, we, uh, Bobby and I, my, my life partner and I lost a dog just yesterday. We'd had the dog for you know, 22 years. So it wasn't like a surprise, but it's still a surprise. And it causes a tremendous amount of pain, you know, internal pain. And what we want to do with this podcast is help people that are, you know, minor things, grief that they're dealing with, or even giving resources for people that have bipolar disorder. Now, I, I, I want to kind of say at the beginning of this, we're not doctors, we're not therapists, we're not trying to solve anybody's problems or heal anybody. We're not energy healers or psychics. We're just, we want to be a resource and a place where you're going to get really good information from, from incredible experts in the field. We're going to have amazing people speaking to us who have done some pretty life-changing work in this field, uh, over, uh, over the past, you know, several decades. Um, I'm going to hand it over to you, Melissa, because I think you've got a real good handle on kind of really kind of science that we, we want to address in, in our show, kind of like where we're addressing it from the science perspective and I'll be the more woo woo girl and talking about food and meditation and, and being a little bit more, uh, spiritual. I don't know, whatever. We'll both do whatever we do. <laughs> well, Mary, you said earlier that you weren't a doctor, but I don't know if in your repertoire you've ever played one on TV. So we're going to have oh, to yeah. really kind of maybe add that in. <laughs> well, there is that. So, um, you know, we, we come to you as, as two citizens of this planet that are navigating our way through to understand everything just as much as you. And to that end, Merrill Hemingway Foundation will serve as a resource navigation. People will be able to come to the foundation, come to us here on Outcomes of the Sun to understand what is possible. To that end, um, yeah, to the science end of it, we there are there are different modalities of of research and of from medicine and scientific backgrounds that are addressing this need for mental health in a better spot, and that means that. Information that's coming to us that's factual, as, coupled with the information that you're bringing to the table that is more esoteric, perhaps, can easily both be brought into the arena. Now, for example, some of the, the medical stuff that we've been able to research that's coming down the pike is talking about the probability of people living much longer than ever before. So if, in fact, there's this high probability that we could live to 130 We'll talk about how that looks in a bikini at another show, but the high probability of living to 130, what does that do for our mental health? What If you are struggling today at the age of 35, 40, living to 130 with the struggles that you're going through may seem daunting. But our hope is that as we introduce the new information that's coming around, for example, one of the studies you and I have been talking about is epigenetics. And the study of epigenetics merely states that your 
we each have a genetic expression according to our DNA. And so how much of that gene is expressed and how much of it is expressed and which gene is expressed is determined by your thoughts, by your actions, and by your environment. So as we bring that information to you, how much of your environment can you control? It's like the study of identical twins who were split at birth and who were adopted perhaps by two different families on two different sides of the country, raised totally differently. How much of those genes were expressed from their, their, their sameness because of environment or thoughts and attitudes? So as we learn this more about who we are as people and as this amazing species that we are, then this will give our audience and you and me and all of us that are listening more information, better armed choices to, to make on how we move forward. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's so powerful, you know, cause there's so many things, there's so many elements to a balanced and healthy brain, right? We think of the brain, yes. here's the brain, it's on top of the body and there it exists in some s sort of space that is not interconnected with, with our body, but it is. And, and that's mm -hmm. kind of where I, my focus tends to be on how are you living your life? What is your lifestyle? What, how do you wake up in the morning? What are you doing? What are you eating? Do you drink enough water? Do you get out mm -hmm. in nature? Do you connect with, you know, people that you love? Do you, do you know how to listen? Do you know how to meditate? Do you know how to breathe? So my, my focus in, in, in my own personal life for my own mental balance, because I know myself, because I, I come from, seven suicides. I come from a family that there is schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, uh, massive depression, uh, serious depression, depressive disorder. Um, uh, you know, uh, so I've got mental health issues in the family, but I refused as a human being looking at my family, but it took me a lot of years to get there. I refused to say, oh, this is my family. That make, that means that's me. Now, mm -hmm. it took me a long time to get there, right? I was, I, I, I thought maybe this was an infectious disease. <laughs> like I, yeah. I thought, oh my gosh, one day I'm going to wake up and I'm just going to have this and I have no choice in the matter. And there's no booster for it. No. <laughs> There is no booster. There is no vaccine for mental health. So what you, but by making that decision by, by, and you know, and we'll go, we'll tell both of us, we'll tell our stories over, you know, over the years. But what happened was a long life of searching, looking for gurus and doctors and holistic healers and psychics and this, that, and, you know, meditating on top of hills and, you know, primal screaming and sweating and sweat lodges, all of which I learned a tremendous amount uh, uh, about myself. But what I realized in the, in the long run is that there is, there, there is an answer for your mental health and mental balance inside of you. And that's what I came to the conclusion. There it, I am my best resource to figure out what my solution is. So, um, you know, I'm not speaking to somebody who needs medication for, bi you know, serious bipolar disorder. But that being said, if you suffer from serious bipolar disorder, your lifestyle really will affect the amount of medication that you need, whether you're going to have episodes more frequently than not. Knowing your kind of topography for lack of a better word, you know, of your body and your mind, knowing what works for you. What we like to do here is give you a lot of information so that you can navigate through that information to find that solution that works for you. And it's specific to you. I mean, but, you know, Melissa and I always say this, there's not one size fits all for mental health. There's just not, it's not in, in physical health. It's, you know, there's not my life partner and I eat very differently. We have to, you know, like he's a 200 some pound man and he needs to eat a lot of meat and this and that, you know, like th that's his, he knows what makes him work and function optimally. And I know what works for me. And it's about negotiating, finding those tools and taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And sometimes it's a it's a hit, it's a hit or miss, you know, mental health is, it's a daily journey. And I mm -hmm. think that we have not given it 
enough you know, focus in, especially in this country, we sort of want to, you know, we want to work hard and we want to avoid those things. And there's different demographics, different, you know, races that don't deal with mental health issues. There's different, yep. you know, like there's, so, and there's so much going on in the world right now. So, I mean, like there's just so much ground to cover. So I think that we're never going to be in, in lacking, you know, our no. being able to share something with you because, you know, the world is different. We, we've, we've gone through what, two and a half years of cra craziness, you know, we've got the, the, this virus comes and everybody got scared. And that also leads me to think about the kids. I get so heartbroken when I think about the children that had to go through, you know, the last two and a half years, maybe not seeing their friends, doing school at home, not connecting, thinking they're making connections because they're on social media, realizing that social media is this kind of weird, unsubstantial, it's not a real connection. I want to get into these issues, these issues of technology, social media, you know, what's yep. going on in our world. Like there's a lot of ground that we will be able to cover and, and we're super excited to do it. I mean, I'll let you continue. <laughs> no, super, super excited. And you're, everything you're saying, I'm sitting here nodding my head like one of those bird feeders that keeps driving <laughs> its head into the water. But because it's so true. Yeah. And by the way, one size fits all to the work in clothing either sidebar. <laughs> by the way. So the, the thing is about the, what's going on around the world is it's not, it used to be we were so isolated. Right. And what was happening here in America was happening here in America. But what's happening here now is infiltrating into other countries. And what's happening in Japan affects us over here. And the grain, the lack of grains coming from Ukraine affect us in Africa, whatever. So we are, we've always been connected, but now we are acutely aware of it. Yes. And so we feel, we feel other people's pain and misery much quicker. And that can be so daunting when you're trying to remember how to separate the dark from the white in your own house, like from the, the towels, from the sheet, from the socks. So when you've got all this kind of this energy coming at you, this news and information just constantly banging at your head, it's hard to remember rituals. You said this in the beginning, and I am right there with you. I, in our household, we have, we are rather mundane in the way we start our day because there's satisfaction in knowing that we're doing some of the same things. I mean, we may wiggle a little bit within it. When we have right. our tea, it may be green tea or jasmine, but we are waking up and having the same rituals because it brings a sense of calm and a sense of control. Yep. And so I think that, you know, as we're bringing all this information in for people, not to overwhelm the audience, but to really let them know, this is this is the leading information that we found out of Sweden. This is what we found out is going out in Africa. This is what so as we bring that information in, yes, it's exciting. But I want to share also something that I was speaking about earlier. Your relationships are so broad in their span because you've spoken in the mental health and wellness arena for quite some time. And so you've got an extensive array of connections in the industry that really are on the cutting edge. Right. Not only that, because of your celebrity marquee, you also have a lot of friends in the industry of acting and, and music and sports and so forth and, and politics that you will be able to bring in um, to share information with, which I'm really, I'm really excited about a lot of the people that are coming in, but also the layman. We have access through some of the meetings that we've had most recently to someone who's leading the firefighters nationwide on their PTSD and behavioral health issues. So we've got front frontline workers and school teachers and stay at home moms. And so the, the, the cross cut yeah. of people that we'll be able to bring in is, is us. It's, it's, it's us, all of us walking in inhabiting this planet. Yeah. So you're going to be able to hear from people that you're going to be able to relate to and people you're going to be able to learn from. It's, it's, it's really good stuff. It's good it, it stuff. It is really good stuff. And, and what's really nice about that is, yes, you, you brought up such a salient point because, you know, yes, we'll have experts. Yes, we'll have people that have profound information. But then it's talking to the, the guy, you know, the first responder that went in when, when Santa Barbara got flooded and lost, you know, saw a child you know, being lost and swept away by the, mm -hmm. by the flooding and, you know, the profound effect that that had on him, but it had on the world. And this is a guy that, you know, does what, 
you know, does what we we think of as, you know, they're kind of untouchable and they're and they're hard and strong and, Tough. and yet, yeah, you know, I think we can all relate to having, you know, d- just dealing with those people that are doing the jobs that we see every day, but we don't realize that the the, the profound effect that just the simple things that we've gone through in the past what five years have had on 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 people. And when you can relate to a story, you can hear a story, you can, you know, even my own story when, when, I, and I, 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 you know, we'll spend an episode, I'll, I'll tell my story, I'll tell my story, you'll tell your story. And people will go, oh my gosh, my story's like yours. You know, the funny thing is, cause I have spoken all over the country and the world and I've told my story and I've talked about the suicides and the mental health issues. And I've talked about growing up in a house of, of, of addicts and, you know, of alcoholics and, and, and dealing with that in a family that I loved. Right. And, and these, these are my people, my, my, my humans, mm-hmm. my, my people that I was, I was a little kid, but when you hear somebody's story, it's not about the facts of the story. It's about the emotions that are, you know, like that I can transfer by telling that story. You resonate with something about that story that feels like it's yours. Because, yes. you know, ultimately, I think that we all, I don't think any of us have a new story. I really don't. I think that we all, we all kind of share in a very, there's probably 25 different stories they just have different wrapping paper right when you get down to that's the right, that's right. of them it's like oh my gosh i felt the same way you know maybe i grew up in michigan or i grew up in idaho or whatever you know it's the way that you feel it's the way a story makes you feel because one of the things i'm i'm profoundly um passionate about is telling your story Telling your story initially, number one, so that you can get a grasp and a handle on it. Not so that you can retell it, retell it, feel sorry for yourself and go down the road of like, I'm going to just, you know, regurgitate my story for the rest of my life. No, you tell your story so that you can release the story's power over you, right? Because the story Mm -hmm. is a memory. It is a fear. It is locked up inside. But once you tell it, you get to release it and then it becomes a story. And that's when the journey begins of finding that solution, that solution in lifestyle, that solution with the doctor, with the therapist, with talk therapy, with, you know, whatever it is that you need. But that combination of things, that's when recovery begins. After you've addressed the story, really dug mm-hmm. into it. Sometimes you have to tell it many times, but it no longer controls who you are because I know that my story doesn't define me anymore. Right. It's just a story. I tell it, I'm not connected in the same way as I was, you know, when I first spoke 20 years ago and I first started telling my story, I would get overwhelmed. I would get overwhelmed on stage. I would cry. I would, you know, still I have emotions. I'm connected to it, but I can observe it now. I have become the observer of my story because my lifestyle habits and the way that I live my life enable me to be very, very balanced about it. And I can look at it. I can see it at a distance. And I know that it's a story. And I also know that I have been able to take the reins of my life and 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 run with it and come up with solutions that suit me. And again, we get back to that thing. We mm-hmm. want to guide you to finding your solutions, specific That's to right. you, unique to you, special to you. That's yes. so exciting for me. I, because it I, is. That's, that's how to help people. It's not to say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm the best. I'm the best doctor. I'm the best this and that. No, you are, right? Yeah. It's right. so cool. Well, and it's all about connection. Yes. We want, it, we, no man is an island. So if we, we stand, when we stand alone in the middle of our pain, it feels it's maximized. As we, as we lean into one another and we make those connections like, oh, she's got a story similar to mine. Oh, she felt in her home, even though the stories are different, she felt the way I felt. Right. Whatever that connection. And that's our biggest that's one. That's one of the reasons that we elected to do this is yeah. because we wanted people to understand a connection and to find answers. I know that. I know we've got so much that's coming ahead. Where and what? How many? What are we talking about? What did you and I settle on? Once a week, we're going to be offering this. Is it going to be coming out once a week for our audience? I don't wait. 
Let's do it. Let's do it. You and I can talk all day. Let's just talk all day. Let's just talk all day. Yeah. Yeah. We and 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 just to share with with our audience, you know, we really wanted to keep it short and sweet because I think there's so many podcasts out there giving you tremendous uh, amounts of information in these large chunks. I would rather give you smaller chunks and a shorter amount of time than en- enable you to dig in. And maybe we do one or two episodes on a certain subject or with a certain, uh, you know, guest, um, whether it's a, a doctor in the field or, or whomever it is, or a, or a first responder, whom, whomever, just because I think that, especially with mental health, sometimes a small bite is really all that you need to get your mind going and thinking about your own life and your own yes. ability to address things. And I think we'd like to be able to, you know, share pointers, like things that you could, you might want to think about in the, in the week to come or something, you know? Well, you know, the other thing is too, that, that I think it's, it's going to be interesting is that we're going to be testing products. We're going to be sharing products that have already been utilized um, that we know works, but we're also going to be exploring options for people, whether it's the earthing matter, whether it's a certain type of water they could be drinking that kind of lines in with the seven doctors. The information that's going to be, they're going to be able to share is data, real facts, and also products that we, we believe that we vetted that know to be, we know to be safe. So yeah. we'll offer that through links and information to our audience. So they'll be able to stay connected. In that yeah. Way. We're never going to share anything with you that we haven't tried or that we're not well, trying or that we're yes. not, you know, <laughs> Or that we're, yeah, pretty much. I'm thinking about those products. I pretty much use them all. <laughs> <laughs> I like them a lot. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be the one that's been chosen to walk over coals barefooted. So we're. This is going to be exciting. We're happy to bring this to you and this information. Um, and again, we. This will be something that we'll be bringing to you. 30 minutes, 45 minutes at the most. If it runs lo- longer, we'll run it into two segments, but at least once a week. So. Here we are. We've been talking about kind of all the things that we're really excited to share with you over the next weeks and months. And um, anyway, I, I couldn't be more thrilled to begin this journey with everyone that's listening and that will start to listen and get excited to follow us um, because Out Comes the Sun is a very special way for us to share story and the stories of people that are just like you living in the world and dealing with the challenges that life brings up all the time, but also giving you happy and wonderful and, and really doable solutions. So thank you for joining us today and tune in next week. We will have a guest next week and uh, it, it should be very exciting. Thank you.